All right, everyone. There's a Star Wars group build going on at Scale Model Addict, and it's a year-long thing. It's not any short-term crazy projects. I recently got this in the mail and decided I want to build it. Thanks to Tokyo Model, De Model Detective, I got this really quick. I mean, I think I got it three days after I ordered it, and that's from Japan. Now, opening the box, it is chromed on the inside. Thunderpaws wants in, so you might hear some banging. The parts are chromed, and they're chromed really well. It's not the normal bright chrome. I was afraid of that. That helmet is in two pieces. That's going to leave a mark. There's no way that's not going to leave a mark on this. Okay. There's the armor pieces, here's the interior pieces. I'm pretty sure this is going together just like a typical stormtrooper. Here's the cape. I'm gonna to have to paint that cape. I can't leave that cape like that. I think it'll look funny if I leave it that way. More armor pieces. The chrome is outstanding on that. And we got articulation pieces and a Star Wars base three. And then in here, oh, looks like it gave a cloth cloak or an insert with some different kinds of stickers on it. No decals, all stickers. But there isn't too much, and it's got a cloth cloak. That's cool. And the directions for Captain Phasma. Okay. And it's it, it's gonna she's gonna go together just like your typical stormtrooper. Alright. I just don't like the multi-piece helmet. It might be okay because there are some seam lines on the helmet and it looks like they did the joints along the seam lines. So just taking a quick look through the directions. If you've built one of the stormtroopers, you won't be surprised on this. Just the cloak surprised me that it's actually cloth. We'll have to see how that looks to scale. There is a plastic one as well. I don't think that plastic one's going to look as good as the cloth one. All right, and the final directions on the cloak, okay, are there, and there is the decal. The cloak, I think, is two pieces. I think there's cloth and plastic. We'll see when we get to it. But anyhow, there's a quick run through. I am going to build this thing. Shouldn't take very long because Stormtrooper takes a couple hours to build, so I expect this one will too. The only thing that worries me is the heavily chrome parts and clipping them and seeing if there are clip marks on them, which I will report upon if I see them. <clears throat> I'm not going to record the whole build process. That would be boring. I'm just going to come back wherever there's trouble and say, hey, this part didn't work right or this part went together really well. So I'll be back in a little bit and let you guys see what it looks like as we go together. Have a good one. All right, everyone, I got step one done, which is the head, okay? And this is like six different pieces, and you wouldn't figure it out by looking at it. There's a seam line running right across there and running right across there. You can barely see it. It's that well engineered. You can see the seam there because I got a little too aggressive with my trimming, but this one is barely there, okay? Okay. And that is my fault because I got a little too aggressive with the trimming. Now, there are smoked visors there. It's actually smoked plastic, clear smoked plastic, which surprised me when I found it. It's the only piece of smoked clear plastic on the entire sprue of black. My advice when putting this together is to be very, very careful of your trim, your trimming when you trim the sprue off the parts. As long as you're very careful, it'll go together just fine. And it looks good. It's very shiny, very chromed, and it looks good. I just have that one minor seam line, which your casual person probably wouldn't even notice. Your expert builder looking for flaws would find it pretty quickly. But anyhow, I like it so far. It looks to be good. Like I said, my only real advice is to be careful with that one spot. And I'm wondering if the C-3PO kit goes together just as well, and I bet it does. I'll be back in a little bit. I'm starting on the body next, so I'll come back when I'm done with that step. All right, everyone, we have got the torso done and the helmet done. That's steps one and two, okay? Now, if we start taking a look at this, 
and you will notice that there are a few nib marks here and there with this kind of finish on this kit you can't really sand very much or they're gonna show there's one right there and there's one over there but outside of that and the arms can hide that when the arms are on if you're careful there are practically none showing the only real troublesome spot I had so far was down here on the bottom of the head I didn't cl clean up the bottom of the head right here very well and since I didn't clean it up very well the two parts weren't mating properly and there was a crack right along the bottom here I took my exacto knife my hobby knife and cut it a little bit and it fixed it now the finish is so good on this you're gonna leave fingerprints so I'm tempted to put gloves on and work this thing while I'm wearing gloves it's gonna scratch if you're not careful and all sorts of stuff so just be really careful while you're putting it together you don't want it scratching up not with this kind of finish on this kit it just looks really good goes together really well again I've come across almost no real problems with the kit most of the points where the uh, parts attach the sprue are interior parts almost none of them are exterior for example this part attached the ball well attaching the ball is fine because you're not going to see that any way you look at it so almost all the parts have interior attachment points so cleaning up is just mainly getting the parts to align it's only these edge pieces right here where I've had some trouble okay but so far really good I'll be back in a bit with another report all right we are working on Captain Phasma here and well wanted to show you something about the gates on Captain Phasma this is a highly chromed piece and I don't want to strip the chrome and redo it that's way too much work for this thing I'm not gonna lie about that it is way too much work an awful lot of work so what I did is you have to be really careful how you clip the parts off the sprue or you're gonna get clip marks uh, now Bandai did a really good job with their design on the kit okay if you take a look and I'm gonna cut some lights on so we have a little bit better light on the situation if you take a look at the attachment points I clipped them far off the attachment points first so I can trim the attachment points without having the sprue in the way if you take a look at the attachment points when it stops moving you will notice that they are doing an outstanding job of their attachment points in other words they minimize how basically they minimize the attachment point second these attachment points are on the flat edge of the part in other words they're not on this edge they're not on this edge right here they're on this edge right here they attach on this edge not this edge by doing so you can see that we're not going to really destroy the chrome too much now you're going to you're going to get some nib marks there's no way around that because well there's nib marks but let me get the other leg I've already put together now you can tell that there are three attachment points on each part of the leg correct on each side okay this is a leg that's already been put together now you can see there's a seam line right here it's not 100 percent pushed together I didn't glue it and if you go to this side though you can also see there's a little bit of a seam line I can push it together harder but you can see if you're really careful you don't get nib marks on this kit because of the way it's been designed you can see them on the leg if I turn the leg correctly there's a piece that goes over the side of the leg right there that helps hide the nib marks the leg I'm working on right now doesn't have that piece that's only on this side I think that's the gun attachment point but you can tell that if you're careful you're not really getting too much in the way of nib marks on this kit because of the way it was designed it's designed quite well even with the head that head is three parts and you can hardly tell that by looking at it very well done kit just be very careful when you're cutting parts off and you won't have any problems with nib attachment uh, attachment points for the sprue 
I'll be back in a little while.